Welcome back. All right, quick news of the day video in between the first and second period of the St. Louis-Nashville game. So, uh, Derek Broussard, uh, sad news for Broussard and for the Sens in that he's had surgery on a fractured fibula. So his season is done. He's a UFA this summer. This this could be the end of his career. It's it's possible. He's played over a thousand games. He's played a long time. So we shall see if that was his last game. And I'm hoping not. I'm kind of hoping he signs another contract for next year. Maybe even with the Sens. I think he had a solid season for them. So maybe. But at any rate, uh, he's had surgery. It looked bad. Um, initially on that play, he was down on the ice. He was not moving. And when an announcer says, yeah, your leg's not supposed to look like that, that's a bad sign. So um, all the best to Broussard and his recovery. Uh, Hronik came back, played for Vancouver for four games, uh, had the one assist, was a minus one in those four games, and has now been basically put back on the shelf for the rest of the season so his shoulder can heal up properly. Uh, he was playing a little over 24 minutes per game during those four games, so it's not like they were taking it easy on him and playing him on third pairing. Uh, hopefully Hronik is 100% good to go for the start of next season um, and, and that Vancouver can, you know, a year from now say this is exactly why we, we picked him up. And Because the plan is, again, for a quick retool of the Vancouver Canucks to get them into contention for a playoff spot, and that's where we're at right now. And, of course, in this market, there's that tear uh, between fans who wanted to see, you know, a complete tank, which wasn't in the offing, and fans who were... Uh, of the mind that, you know, win as many games as you can and don't worry about the whole tank and part of things. Uh, San Jose, uh, Eklund has had shoulder surgery for a torn labrum, so his season is likely done. Um, Eklund looked decent for them in the call-up. I would think he'll be a regular next season for them. Uh, it's too bad this happened, though, because this, of course, is evaluation time. There's a lot of guys making their debuts right now. That's why I'm not really covering it in the news videos, because you're going to be covering a board with Guys who may or may not be regulars next year, in a lot of cases, they're guys just being called up, being given that that look in the lineup, see where they're at. And uh, so Eklund, I would expect to be a regular in the San Jose lineup, but they're, they're not going to get that look at him that they wanted to before the season was done. Uh, so the reason I'm wearing this Flyers jersey, we're going to talk about the Flyers a bit. They're returning to their burnt orange 1982 through 2007 era. Uh, this has leaked out that that's, that's the plan, is that they're going to go back to their old colors and their old look. Philadelphia does not really do new and different. They they stick to the orange, they stick to the black, the white. The logo doesn't really change. Uh, that's why when they do the reverse retro, it looks odd because it just looks like a Flyers jersey. Both of their reverse retros just look like a regular Flyers jersey. Uh, so I, I think returning to that look is going to be popular with fans. The really, really bright orange that has been the the, the the basically default orange color teams have used. We've now seen two teams go away from that look over the last two years. First the Oilers, and now the Flyers. So, yeah, uh, that color really, I, I still don't understand what the NHL was thinking there. Going from, like, and I, I mean because if there's multiple teams going to that same shade of orange. It has to be somebody somewhere making that decision. And uh, I, I think the darker orange definitely works better for Philadelphia. So there you go. Uh, Fletcher's gone, and now the, they're, they're getting the proper orange back for the team. Before you know it, uh, the Flyers will be back in contention for the playoffs, and then a Stanley Cup, and then there you go. Uh, but I, I do think going back to this kind of a look is a, is a good idea. I, I do. Uh, so, and I'm saying this kind because it may not be exactly what this jersey is. Obviously, it'll be an Adidas, and then it'll be a Fanatics the year after and all that, but... It'll be very, very similar to this. At least we know the colors will be the same. Uh, Stuart Skinner, Rookie of the Month this month for the NHL. I didn't see a listing for the three stars of the month. I was looking for that today. Uh, Skinner, the Rookie of the Month, and he does have a shot at ending up winning the Calder. If he has another you know, couple of weeks like he had last month, he will be making a push for the Calder. Uh, it does look like it's Beneers to lose, but Beneers, while he's been very good, I don't know. I don't know between Skinner and Beneers. I don't know who's been more important to their team who's had a more impressive season. And again, you know, Skinner had 10 wins in the month of March. So, I mean, if he can put up another four or five wins this month, we we could see Skinner end up holding up the Calder Trophy in June. Of course, Oilers fans would like to see the Oilers holding up a different trophy in June as well. Uh, we shall see. Uh, so there, there are a lot of clenching scenarios for today. Uh, basically, the Oilers, the Wild, the Kings, the Stars, and the Bolts all could clinch today. 
And if Tampa Bay clinches, it could also clinch that we will see Toronto and Tampa Bay in the first round. I mean, I, I could do then a preview of that series, but it would be incomplete. I don't do the series previews until we're actually at the end of the season. So as tempting as it might be to already look at Tampa Bay, Toronto, and you know what the odds are and aren't, uh, the reality is we don't know what their lineups are going to look like a couple weeks from now, what injuries may heal up, and what injuries might occur between now and then. So uh, it is it is a very interesting situation we have, though, right now where it feels like that separation that we weren't seeing all year, the last few weeks we've started to see it, where the teams that are going to make the playoffs are, are getting that cushion. And then there's there's just that little bit of uncertainty that's still there in both conferences, but in general, we know who's going to be playing who, and who's going to be. Uh, the top three teams in each division seem to be pretty set. And uh, we'll see how the rest of it shakes out. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.